It's a very good morning from the Algarve International Circuit in the south of Portugal here at Portimao for heat six of the Ligier European Series. Two races once again for the JS2Rs and the JSP4s, the baby prototypes, to decide not quite championship titles because they were all sewn up last time out at Spa-Francorchamps, but certainly there's a dogfight for the second positions within the championship and it's going to be fun to watch those develop across the day. Two Two separate races, each of an hour plus an extra lap and some good numbers of cars as well, which shows how strong the interest is for season 2023 and the Ligier European Series. My name's Johnny Palmer. Delighted to be joined by Graham Goodwin, who's the editor of DailySportsCar.com. That's the track we're going to be tackling, 4.6 kilometres of it, split into three sectors, up and down Dale. If you don't know about Portimao Circuit, and thankfully so many more people around the world do now, courtesy of Formula One and the World Endurance Championship. WEC confirmed only a couple of weeks ago, Graham, to be coming here next year. Uh, they are. I'm delighted that we're coming back here. And, uh, in fact, this morning confirmed that the European Le Mans Series package will be back here uh, for another three seasons, 23, 24 and 25. Excellent. Uh, it's always a great welcome here. The drivers love the circuit. We love talking about it. Uh, and it's game on. Two races, though, Johnny, to look forward to today for the Ligia European Series. If you're followers of the other part of this package, a bit different this weekend, uh, both the Michelin Le Mans Cup and European Le Mans Series on Sunday, as they were last year, but uh, two hours and two laps of entertainment to come from what is a boosted grid, Johnny. Yet another pole position for Gillian Omrioni. Sealed the title in Belgium three weeks ago. A 145.434 for the 19-year-old from Nancy. Uh, smart driving, very good qualifying there for Michnia Stefan in car 44. It's going to be fun to see how he gets on. Then the 17 Pegasus racing car shared by Anthony Nara and Dimitri Engelbert. And it's uh, Simone Ricciatelli and Nicola Neri in the LR Motorsport car. A bit further back then in the JS2Rs. Remember, they're dicing for their own independent race and separate championship points. Hayton Carajuli, now been crowned officially as champion in the JS2Rs, joined for the first time this year by Martin Rich in the number 75 RLR M Sport car. Horst Felbermeyer Jr. in the number 40 RLR car is there as well alongside. So it's an all RLR uh, M Sport front row although they're kind of on different rows, if you know what I mean. One is on in 10th position, one just behind in 11th spot. Cedric Ultramare for cool racing. And then it's uh, Alain Grand and Simon Escalier in the TM Evolution car. But 19 cars qualified. Big part 18 qualified. We should have had 19 out there, but... Uh, for whatever reason, uh, uh, Anthony Vajda did not put in a time despite doing laps. So I wonder whether there was a penalty in amongst that, which saw his lap times deleted as a result. But he'll have to therefore start at the back of the field. Uh, is displayed on our timing screen. So that will be, if he's there, a, a bit of a dicey start for uh, André Vajda because he's going to have to work his way through um, in inverted commas, the slower cars are still very, very rapid, the JS2Rs, the GT-derived machines. And now coming out of turn number 14, around the long, lingering right-hander at 15, behind the pace car, whose lights are out. Very smart Mercedes AMG that will kick off the first race of the day of the Ligier European Series. Not sure how many laps we're going to get through, but let's hope um, for a slightly less sticky race than we had at Spa-Francorchamps, which was littered with safety cars. Uh, slightly fewer gravel traps here, so the incidents might just mean cars running a touch wide and off onto the higher friction stuff. There goes the pace car, very late in the day to dive into pit lane. Now the pace will be dictated by the team Virage livery car, the yellow, orange and black of Gillian Henrion, this year's champion in JSP4, still presented by red lights on the long straight. They're about to go out, though, now, and we will be racing into the awkward first corner. The bomb burst begins now as we are racing in the hour starts to tick down. There's a lot of dust offline where Gillian Omrion finds himself and Stefan to the outside, although he's going to lose a position, 44 down to third, because that slotting through is George King racing on his own this weekend for Monza Garage. Yeah, great start from George King, but he's under pressure from the inside now. He drops back to third place. So Michnia Stefan, the man from Romania, is running in back up to second position in the smart driving car. 
And again, cold tyres, cold brakes, three abreast into this uh, tricky turn five. Have they all got through without any contact? Yes, just about. But the loser in amongst that was Simone Ricciatelli for LR Motorsport. The orange number three car down to fifth position. And now the fight back on again between, well, D Dimitri Engelbert, who was the big winner down at Turn 5, up to third place in the blue of Pegasus Racing. Yeah, Henri on away at the front here, but battling away in the mid-pack here with the JSP Fours, and there's much the same going on behind, by the way, with the JS2Rs. We'll get to those in due course. We'll also talk, Johnny, as we get this race, uh, deeper into this race, is about some key changes coming for next year. Not being idle, the Leisure European Series, in preparing the ground for further growth. Side by side, though, yeah. for the pair ahead here. Again, Michnia Stefan on the inside, Dimitri Enchelbert in the blue and white car for Pegasus Racing on the outside. So a Frenchman trying to attack Romanian there and didn't quite come off, but it might have done. Better run out of 14, or out of 13, in fact. But then they were squabbling into 14, and that gave Smart Driving, number 44, the slight advantage. And look at the gaggle just behind that are trying to latch themselves onto this as well. We could have five cars very shortly for second position. This is all play. Oh, oh. huge lockup for Dimitri Triangle Bear, and likewise in a delayed fashion, then from the car ahead. Amazing, but this is all allowing Gillian Orion to get away. He's over two and a half seconds clear of this group. This battling behind him is allowing the championship winner. Uh, well, there you go, look at him. A bit of a squirrel under braking there, though. As he tries to get away down the hill. Around the rotunda, you can see the building just in the background there, provides amazing views of this circuit. So if you don't know much about Michnia Stefan, he's uh, 25 years old from Targa Vista in Romania, but this is his first action of the season in the Ligier European Series, and he's been out of motorsport, top-line motorsport, for a few years, in fact, but... He doesn't show on the timing screen because he's popped up very quickly into second position in the qualifying yesterday and is holding Dimitri Enchelbear off for the time being. The man out front starting to set purple sector times. Yes, this is the first flying lap, so we would expect quicker lap, obviously, on lap two compared to the rolling start of one. But it is Henrion lighting the screens up and very much enjoying nearly a four-second advantage as, again, Enchelbear nibbling on the back of the smart driving car. Yeah, beginning to look a little bit frustrated, isn't he? Very defensive drive for the Romanian driver ahead. Enchelbear, we know, is quick, cannot get by, and is watching from an increasing distance as Onrion disappears off. There he goes now, way past line. They all, both go way wide, and there is going to be, I think, race control taking interest there. But uh, four seconds to the good now, Onrion, on this battle. Hayton Caragiuli leading in the JS2Rs. He has a 55-point lead, championship lead coming into this round, with only 50 points left on the table. So confirmed, in fact, at Spa as the championship winner. And Fabian de la Place for CTF Performance looking to try and stay with him. There's only about a second between them. This is further behind the JSP4s, but remember a separate podium for the 2Rs and uh, individual championship points as well. Blue car number 40 is Horst Felix uh, Felbermeyer in the RLRM Sport car, having a good dice with Simon Escalier in the 11 machine. So remember, not just changes for class, by the way, the other thing uh, reinforced in the announcements for the shape of the 2023 championship, Johnny, is a recommitment from Ligier to this astonishing prize fund. Yes. Because we are going to see Gillian Henrion with the opportunity to step up as the championship winner. A bit of a moment there for Cara Julia, I thought. Car just getting a little bit loose on the braking. He'll be able to, uh, with a pretty much fully funded uh, effort in the Michelin Le Mans Cup aboard Elysia P3. Hayton Caragiuli's prize will be a funded drive and a JSP4 next year if he chooses to stay with the Elysia European Series. All told, a quarter of a million euros 
of prize value uh, in this series. Yep, so and it will continue for a further year. Indeed, yep, exactly the same prize money as it was this year, heading into 2023, which I'm sure will be very, very attractive to those wanting to get involved in the Ligier European Series, because what it does is you the perfect start-off into ACO rules racing. And then if you do well in your first year, you get a massive foot-up for the next level of motorsport, whether you're in uh, JS2R, that'll help you with JSP4 the following season. If you're in the baby prototypes this year, then into Le Mans Cup you might go, oh. and Dimitri Bear has experience there as well. Was there almost a touch running into turn three? Again. Oh, there was a touch there. There was quite a biff there, and that's allowing George King to close the gap on this pair as well. So it's now a three-car battle. Contact there yeah. again to the inside. And this is Dimitri Bear massively on the defensive. Can he hold George King and back? Again. Another tap. And George King, well, kind of um, flustered out of that, you might say. Forceful driving from Dimitri Bear, who's right across the track once again, realising that George King might get a good exit coming out of five. And now King is potentially being the hunted driver by Natan Biel. In the next car in the sequence, Biel up the inside. Green door mirrors for M Racing. And look out for the LR Motorsport car of Simone Ricciatelli as well, trying to pick off George King. That would be brave to the outside of turn nine. Can't make it work. Well, excitement galore in two or three corners there. It's going to continue like this for the next 53 minutes and the lap. JSP4 coming alight. And that all started with a bit of a lunge from Dimitri Bear up the inside into turn three. And that continued. That had a ripple effect down through that pack, Johnny, that lasted for a further three or four corners. And Michnia Stefan, new to these cars. By the way, Michnia, his first name. So there's a slight glitch on our timing systems uh, this weekend. He's new to the championship, but uh, he's not called Stefan. Stefan is the, the family name. And Michnia uh, clearly having to just adjust very slightly. And the odd mistake is creeping in. And that's what's allowing Dimitri Bear a sniff. But then when that doesn't work, he's got three cars right on his boot lid also trying to take the Pegasus Racing's place. So really good fighting. And this, I think, a precursor of what we might be looking forward to for next year as well. Hayton Carajuli. Under pressure. He is, because the fastest car in JS2R is actually right behind him. Fabian Della Place with the purple icon next to his name. Although Carajuli uh, snatches that back again as they cross the line once more. RLRM Sport ahead of CTF. Yeah, the 69 car changed livery as well as driver lined up. Uh, this weekend has been an all black car, but Delaplace looking for the inside line into turn one. Wait and see whether or not that's worked. Uh, Gillian Orion is just driving away here. He's seven and a half seconds clear now of that second place battle. Yeah, and Henri on we knew was going to be good coming into this season after a couple of years in the Formula 4 Championship within France, and he then went on to do some European Formula Renault racing. Had a year out last year, actually, and back then attacking with a full season in the Ligier European Series. But, I mean, his record has almost been completely faultless. Now, a moment or two ago... We had a run into turn three. This was an overtake on car 33. 53 so, and 43, I think, isn't it? Yeah, OK, so Bernardo Pinheiro, local driver. First time we've seen him in action in the Ligier European Series and the Team Virage car ahead of now Le Dussab's Jacques Nicolet. And he gets uh, away from Jacques Nicolet. His next target, by the way, uh, what a, a, a name to have back with us. Raymond Narak is back in the... Uh, the Ligier European Series, I think I'm right, racing with his son this That's weekend. That's right, yep, Raphael. Ray Raymond, uh, long-time competitor international sports car racing in the IMSA Matmut Porsches, operated by his company in Rouen, as I remember. Mm. So. Yeah, I was, I was remembering yesterday with uh, some other guys from the Ligier European Series, a, an ELMS race that happened at Donington Park in 2012 yep. with not very many cars no, that didn't. season, but Raymond was there in the IMSA Performance Map with Porsche. And, uh, yeah, he's clearly been, you know, gone to Le Mans many times over and a bit of a, a legend in all of ACO rules racing, really, but it's fabulous to have him back. Last raced in the ELMS for Ebi Motors in 2018. Raphael uh, Narak, his, his son, has never raced in Ligiers or indeed in anything within the ACO. So uh, that might again be a door opening perhaps for Narak Jr. That would be a, that'd be a great pairing to see next year for a full season, wouldn't they? Let's wait and see what happens there. Dimitri Angel Bear, by the way, has dropped back a little from that battle. Now back on it, though. 
with a purple first sector. We're here, though, with the battle for fifth position. George King under pressure from Simone Riccitelli. Another big lock up there. Yeah. And the 17 this time, the Pegasus car of Dimitri and Gilbert. That's not the first or the second time we've seen that from the 17 car. I do hope he's not going to be in trouble later on this race. First few laps you can kind of accept, but we're now on lap six, and you would have expected tyre temperature to be right there, so that's now starting to just creep in as an error. Clearly trying to push as hard as possible, and it's very easy to snatch a break here and there, but an absolute best first sector for Dimitri Engelbert. I was telling you about uh, Julien Henrion's record so far. He will be probably a tad frustrated that this run of wins was broken at Spa in the first race when he finished second yep. and only scored 18 points. Uh, but he still has 243 for the season. And from our 10 races, he's won nine of them. Topped every session so far this weekend too and looking on course for yet another victory. Uh, worth mentioning, by the way, and taking nothing away from the race winner in the first race at Spa, that uh, his pace up until a late uh, safety car intervention was good enough that he could have won that one as well. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it was a, a really stop-start affair, the first outing at spa Um A wet but drying track, I seem to remember, very tricky to judge, and cars off in the gravel yeah. several times over, which meant that we never got the flow, and uh, Henri on missed out on the opportunity. But uh, a good win for Natan Biel, nevertheless. Biel currently fourth behind... Dimitri Engelbert. Now we're focusing again on a fight between a couple of cars in the JS2Rs. This is horse Felix Felbermeyer of the Felbermeyer dynasty. So third generation racer up ahead of Simon Escalier, who's not raced in this championship before, but we did see last year in the Le Mans Cup, I think it was, with Arbrecht's competition. It's a mature drive here from Karajuli leading this race and a good drive too from the other RLR driver. Horst Felix Felbermeyer, both with pressure in sight, soaking that up. Great looking little cars, these JS2Rs. Hints of Ligier racers past and all sorts of styling hints to all sorts of other influences. Back with the JSP4s, the 17 here. That's a change. Dimitri Engelbert, at least briefly, made his way through and he's going to make his way through again. A little bit of overdriving there from the, in that case, not that smart driving. Yeah, I mean, this is really a, through there. A, a tricky part of the track because it drops away and the car goes light and then you're hitting the brakes. And that's why there was a lockup again from Angel Bear, but too hot into turn one for Stefan, Michnia Stefan, and he just ran a little bit wide and that's allowed two cars through, in fact. Angel Bear and now Natan Biel is up to third position. Interesting to see what Biel can do with a little bit of clear air in front of him now. Also, what will the pace of Dimitri Angel Bear now clear of this pack? But he's got 10.2 seconds to find yeah. uh, before he can be with Gillian Henrion. And Henrion is responding immediately with a purple middle sector. Down the hill into turn nine and then back up again where the track climbs something like 10 metres in a very short space. And George King now, his turn to lock up briefly. That might be an opportunity for Richard Telly, who's right on his tail. Different lines being taken through turn 12 as well. And Mikhnia More Stefan... More lock-ups ahead, you know, not a yeah. this time. Yeah, it's happening all over. And uh, it does happen, to, uh, particularly on that run up to turn 13 too when uh, the downforce is suddenly lost from the car because they're hitting the brakes. It's a warning, by the way, gone to Dimitri Angel Bear for what I suspect is weaving on the straight. His behaviour on the uh, the start straight, start finish straight, I'm sure that's referring to. Yeah, generally the accepted uh, um, protocol is that you can change your line once to defend, but you can't then switch back again a second, third, fourth time. So if someone's got a run on you, which is often the case out of 15, sometimes you just have to sit there and take the medicine into turn one. Hayton Caragiuli also constantly mindful of where Fabian de la Place is right behind in the 96, the orange and black car for CTF performance. Now, this is the 25 and the 95. It it's the other CTF cars. Bruno Chaudet ahead here in the TM Evolution 25, the seven, seventh place in JS2R, fending off 
the attentions of Gilles Poiret. And here, another battle in JSP4. We've said it from the start, and it continues side by side again between the 23 of George King, Simone Ricciatelli in the number three car. King comes out the better this time. He didn't lead in the last time in sector. He's going to lead to the next one. Ricciatelli, though, on the hunt here. Does at times look to be the quicker of the two cars. Who's behind Ricciatelli? That is Remen Narak, who's uh, approaching at speed and as catching. well. Yeah. So three cars very shortly for these positions. Fifth, sixth, seventh place. Andre Vashta, who did start the race from the back, remember, because all of his top qualifying times were taken away from him. He's already up to eighth position. And a mistake for George King at the start of the lap. That's where we lost the place. Simone Ricciatelli through. Briefly. Yeah. It's another fastest lap, by the way, for Gillian Henriot. He's not allowing or trying not to allow Dimitri Angel Bear to get any kind of impression. There's something that can be won here. Side by side again between this battling pair, George King to the outside. Had to cope with quite a bump on the high side of turn 15, but he dealt with it well. Now George in two minds as to when he pulls across the nose of the LR Motorsport car. Clearly wants to avoid contact at all costs, but the 50 machine right behind of Raymond Narak for Ladus Ab, he's lost none of his speed or indeed spotting an opportunity because yeah. as these two squabble, they're slowing each other down and Narak now right in the game for fifth position. Yeah, George King with a warning flag now for abusing track limits. Car 95, by the way, towards the back of the pack. We saw at the orange CTF performance car, Gilles Poiré, reported to the stewards for track limits. There's going to be a penalty coming there. Up the inside, Riccatelli. Has he got the better run? Yes, he does. I think he's got it done there, Johnny. Looking for good drive off the corner. The next one is a left-hand kink, but if George can stay there, the harder breaking point is the right-hander. And in fact, the LR Motorsport car was inches ahead, but can't hold on to it because of the swing back. Although, Riccatelli now on the inside line. How did he end up there. It's great stuff. It really is good racing and Raymond Narak unsure as to how involved he wants to get with this because there is a risk I suppose that the two cars might take one another off. Another lock up again from the Brit. Italian right behind him. French oh, trouble. and off the road that I think is Michnia Stefan in the 44 car who was fourth but is now off the road on the run in to turn 12. Michel Parade by the way immediately got a drive through penalty and has immediately taken it. There was another JS2R, by the way, running quite slowly there. Just trying to pick out who that might be. Yeah. I think it may well be the 22 smart driving car, Bogdan Dobrici. OK, so there's the car spinning at the bottom of the hill. That is car 44, I'm pretty sure. And we'll get confirmation of those positions now as they yes. cross the line. Yes. Yes. Stefan's dropped down the order to seventh position, but at least he did recover. And now the two smart driving cars are together on the screen. Andre Vajda, uh, very much different narrative for him. He's working his way up the order. As sadly, for Mikhnia Stefan, he's dropping down. Cracking battle between these two, though. George King and Simone Riccitelli. Raymond Narak, the silver fox behind, will be <laughs> watching and learning. Car 23 this time, it is George King, will be getting a drive-through penalty, I've no doubt. Reported to the drivers for abusing track... Uh, the drivers, the stewards, for abusing track limits. And it almost inevitably, a drive-through is going to follow. Yeah, so we will wait for further messages to the bottom of our screen in a moment or two. Now playing the traffic beautifully as they're lapping the 95 of Gilles Pouré, who's just been into the pits. So this was that was outside of the pit lane uh, pit stop window, which kicks in at 27 minutes into the race. Just drive through. Sorry, drive through. You did yep. mention. Yep. Beg your pardon. So 27 minutes into the race, and it is these days a seven-minute uh, pit stop window. So on a relatively short track, 4.6 kilometres, you get plenty of opportunity to make the stop. Still the LR Motorsport car not able to get by George King. Yeah, great move from Riccatelli, just did not have the traction to take advantage of the position he got on track. So a better line through from George King, but we think bad news awaits for the 23 squad. So Pure back in the mix again now. He is back in the Ligier European Series for the first time this year. Did compete on two separate occasions last year for the same outfit, CTF Performance. 
but it's good to have Gilles Pouret with interest, no doubt, for next season. Here's a guy we haven't been talking a great deal about, Julian Henrion, in the respect of him lighting up the screens, we certainly have, because he's just done another fastest lap of the race and is virtually 13 seconds yeah. clear of the rest. Yeah, first man into the 145s, 145.945 last time around, compared to 147.3 from Dimitri, Dimitri Anjopair, who managed one lap where he closed a two or three tenths. But other than that, it has been uh, a tail Johnny of Gillian Henriot continuing to stretch away the advantage in the number 16 car. It's a powerhouse display from him. Yeah, and another big lock up, huge lock up this time for George King. So again, if, if that's certainly slowing him down, but it will also potentially come back to bite him later on in the race. A flat spot is only going to get worse. And the problem is every time you hit the brakes hard, the tyre finds that flat spot again and just continues to eat away at that particular chunk of rubber. Swinging their way through turn 12, and still Ricciatelli not quite close enough to take full advantage of these mistakes from George King. George racing on his own this weekend for the first time this season. Has been sharing with Bonnie Valori, hasn't he, That's for right. much of the year? Indeed. And, uh, for whatever reason, Raymond Narak has just dropped back a little bit. It's a little bit of traffic. He, he okay. just took his time getting through that uh, lapped JS2R. Interesting to see whether or not he can close that gap. His pace pretty good. So over the line they will go, and in the far distance there is uh, Mithnia Stefan, who is trying to gain some of these places back again. Abhi Vajda, by the way, is back in eighth place, having started from the back of the grid, is making progress on more or less everybody. He's quicker than this pair at the moment. Mm. There is a gap, something like, what, 10 seconds back to Vajda, but he's taking chunks of time out of this and could well become a factor here. Yeah, he's a quick driver, as a lot of the smart driving um, contestants are. I was asking Elsa Nicolay yesterday, who's your talent scout in Romania? Because there's constantly new drivers coming from that part of the world. It's basically smart driving, who yeah. are the Ligier representatives in that country, as George King locks up again. And they are constantly on the lookout for drivers maybe returning to motorsport after a period of time out, or brand new raw silver rated um, drivers as well. And we've had plenty of them this season. Well, it's great to see. I wouldn't say a new nation, but a nation we don't traditionally see in European level competition coming outside the, the national and regional borders and having a crack on the international scene. And we, what we know, what, what history tell, teaches us, Johnny, is that once you do get that little bit of success, the word spreads in the national racing community and you get more. Yep. And also, coming here to Portugal, we've got local interest in the Team Virage number 43 car. So, actually, a teammate this weekend of Gillian Omrion and sharing that car, Bernardo, Bernardo uh, Pinheiro, who's doing the opening stint, and then Jose Maria Mareiros to come in the second half hour. Still no difference in the gap between third and fourth in JS2R. This is still Horst Felix Felbermeyer in the blue Felbermeyer colours for RLR, ahead of Simone Escalier for TM Evolution. Yeah, that, that, that's Ligier really does suit those fantastic heritage hmm. Felbermeyer colours. They've done a great job of the way they've highlighted that livery with it. It's a credit to its history. And it is a livery beloved of endurance racing fans around the world. Another warning flag, this time for Pinheiro, Bernardo Pinheiro. somewhere. Yeah, we've had plenty of that so far. Tortured Michelin rubber. Julian Henrion still with the fastest lap of the race, a 145.945. He did that a couple of laps ago. We're working lap 14 and nearly 25 minutes into this race. So another couple of minutes and the pit lane will be officially open for one mandatory stop. And that will be dictated by time. Remember, extra time added to drivers that are either a silver-silver combination or indeed just a solo silver driver, as is the case for Gillian Henrion. So that will hold him back a touch and therefore there'll be more work to do in the closing half an hour. 
They're worth, by the way, looking into any kind of online resource you've got, including the Legio European Series website, which has all sorts of helpful information. Two new classes next year coming, mm. Johnny, for the Legio European Series. And with an emphasis towards AM drivers, there's to be a pro-AM class and an AM-only class. They will race for their own class honours. The silver, silver drivers and a silver solo driver will continue to be welcomed but we'll be contesting the overall championship only. So all sorts of real new options for competitive talent, developing talent to come in and have a play here as the battling two JSP4s deal with another of the JS2Rs in traffic. Yeah, I would point you to the uh, Legio European Series social media. They have a, a Twitter page, for instance, as now the LR Motorsport car has a long look at the inside, but Ricciatelli thinks better of that in the that's, uh, moment in isolation. What's his drive like off turn five? Not quite as good as George King. Well, even Stevens, really. But if you go to Twitter and then to forward slash Ligier Euro Siri, without the S on the end, uh, there's a tweet from the 13th of October which actually details the extra classes we will have in both JSP4 and JS2R next year. And there's in Pro-Am, there's a chance for the first time to have some gold-rated drivers right. in the championship, which really excites me. You have to be accompanied by a bronze, which is fair enough, but, you know... And, and there's no doubt a gold will be serving a, a much longer pit stop penalty as a result of that. Yeah. But it adds another element to this championship, doesn't it? Yeah. And they, they've constantly been thinking about what the marketplace is looking for. And there's all sorts of pluses here. Cracking cars, they race very well. I can't think, Johnny Palmer, of a cheaper way for anybody in motorsport to race on the full Le Mans circuit. No, that's a very good point. And, um, and actually, next year, it's a, a really confined uh, race meeting for the Ligiers, all within one day. Yes. So you've got practice, qualifying, and the race action on test day next year. So um, it, what it does provide, potentially, is those people that are wanting to do Michelin Le Mans Cup, the road to Le Mans, why not do the Ligiers on the Sunday before and then concentrate on Le Mans Cup in the week? Absolutely. Then beyond that, Johnny, the other opportunity is have your racing weekend and then have something that very often racers don't get to do in a race uh, season, which is have a fantastic social event with your friends and family yeah, for the perfect. centenary Le Mans 24 hours. Yeah. Marvellous. So that'll be the 4th of June next year, Heat 3 of the Ligier European Series. But we've also got visits again to the Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya in, a in April, Imola in May, Le Mans in June, as mentioned, and then we go to Le Castellet, Spa, and here in the Algarve International Circuit to close out the season. 12 races, 6 heats, and a really delicious calendar set out for 2023. Here's Bernardo Pinheiro for Team Virage, running it in ninth position. The pit stops have already started, though, right on cue. And Jacques Nicolet, the first of the JSP4s to head down pit road. Gilles Pouret, having done a drive-through earlier on, is now in for a, a legitimate stop. He's had two drive-throughs, has he? Uh, no, it's his second. This is his second, second stop. stop. And the previous but, one was 29 seconds. Yeah. Uh, his team manager being called. Oh, big trouble for George King. Gets caught out by the slower car. Yeah. By the way, this car has not been called for a drive-through. I did say I thought it was going to be. It hasn't happened. So, big trouble there for George King. That's dropped him back. Uh, Gillian Henry, on, who, by the way, was getting warned for track limits fairly recently in Turn 15. He comes in, maybe for a bit of a cool-down, for what would be a longer stop than some. He came in way over 10 seconds clear still yes. of Dimitri Engelbert, who now takes the lead of the race. So George King's moment, I think, was at turn nine, where the cars again are struggling for aero grip, much really like uh, like this, the 44 Stefan, uh, Stefan car there into turn number one. A big old wiggle from the second of the smart driving machines. First, the smart driving machines, because Andre Vajda is a couple of cars back. George King's actually rejoined right in between the two Romanian run cars. But it was almost as if he needed to get out of the throttle or indeed leap on the brakes. And that massively unsettled the car and chucked him off into the scenery. He did well to recover it from there to still hang on to fifth. 
Well, Vajda is flying. I mean, he is now in a three-car, four-car battle for what at the moment is third, uh, third place. Of course, that's affected by other cars pit stopping, but he's going to be in this battle, that 44 car, if we can keep that pace up. Yeah. And I notice Mignia Stefan's car is now trailing some bodywork. There's also something starting to flap a little bit on Vajda's car, but I think that's more just on the top of the nose and the bodywork flexing rather than something loose. Tricky now to have to go around the outside of a JS2R at turn 11. That does, does deliver you into the apex at 12, so worked pretty well, in fact for the fourth, fifth and sixth placed cars. They are further up the order because of cars ahead of them stopping on the road. So Julian Henrion still in the pit lane for his mandatory stop. Natan Biel likewise and Bernardo Pinheiro has come in as well. Henrion though, now back on the move. Uh, Hector Caraculli has shown on the timing, has stopped on track. That's very concerning. Uh, okay. It's down at turn 11. It could be that that is a glitch. Yes. But I'll keep an eye on his sector times. We've shown he has had a very yeah, slow has. second sector. Uh, Hayton Karajuli's been off the road. Yeah. It's taken him th three times longer than it should have done. So that's been a spin somewhere, maybe a left turn, well, middle sector. So could have been turn seven or eight, perhaps. That puts Fabian Delaplace into the lead in the JS2R class, head of Simon Escalier. But, of course, their pit stops are now underway as well. So, bad luck indeed for the young man who will win this title, 75, in for RLR M Sport. Here is the second car from RLR, the number 40 car with Hertz Felix Felbermeyer at the wheel. Solo driver once again this weekend. It also means, sadly for Martin Rich, that he's, he won't be given the car in the lead position. And Martin, it, with a lot of work to do, therefore. Just have to work harder. Yeah, Martin, fine. a very experienced racer, uh, has had real success in 24-hour racing in the UK. Race at Le Mans, I think, three or four times now. Yeah, he's, he's also done Petit Le Mans, in fact. So that was uh, in 2011, but... Uh, 2011 to 14. I'm not sure whether that's consecutive the, run for Martin. The, the, the Lotus um, Evora GTE. Yeah, yeah. Remember uh, those. Factory and Takar. Jet Alliance in GTE Pro. So uh, that was 2011 as well. But uh, great to have Martin back. And again, perhaps a plan to fully invest some time in the championship for next year. Well, he had half a season in Michelin Le Mans Cup with a, uh, a season shared with Simon Butler, the racing reverend, who's Indeed. here yep. this weekend for his another part of his efforts uh, with the RLR team. But, yep, be interested to find out what Martin plans to do coming into 2023. Pit stop still the way on pit lane now. Simone Riccitelli comes in from the lead, in fact. So this will take just a few minutes to settle into what is going to be the order to the flag, Johnny, yeah. or the order in terms of the fight to the flag. So car 95, as I said a little earlier, had that uh, penalty, drive-through penalty. Team manager called to the steward in race control immediately. That was before the pit stop. It's the 85 car there. Bit of a... This is Andre Vajda's car. Is Andre driving that solo this weekend? Yes, I think so. Right, well, Let's uh, just check. He was looking what I might term purposeful there. Uh, he's had a long stop, longer than it needed to be. Two minutes oh, out on this big contact in the pit that's lane. That's why. Yes. So Simone Ricciatelli and Andre Vajda took him two minutes and 18 seconds in the pit road, but they were no doubt having to do some repairs there. Didn't well, see the start why, of the that's incident. That's why he was being purposeful. He's making sure that the steering was steering. <laughs> yes, making sure that everything was still in the right place. Now, uh, we didn't see how that happened, but the contact came from Riccitelli's car. Indeed. Um, both trying to get to pit bays that were next to one another. The lollipop is still down, by the way, on Mikner uh, Stefan. So Simone Riccitelli shown as the race leader, although in the pits, and Stefan's car also... Uh, in the pit lane. Gillian Henriens had to do a stop, remember, as per the regulations, about 20 seconds slower than drivers that include a bronze, yep. uh, including uh, Raphael Narak, but when his dad was driving, that stop was only a minute and 47 seconds. Perfectly legal, I'm pretty sure, but that gives you an idea. One minute 47, compare that to 2.05 for Gillian Henriens. It hasn't affected the fact that he will continue to lead the race, though. And by 17 and a half seconds, 
So cheering on, Rion now from Anthony Nara. Simone Riccitelli uh, is emerged in third place, but with Rafael Narak in close contention. Uh, unsurprisingly, cars 85 and 3 under investigation for, quotes, behaviour in the pit lane. So that's going to be about just who was at fault for that contact. To be blunt, no real excuse for contact in the pit lane. No, certainly not. And, uh, you know, the, the dimensions of your car are even more important when you're in a pit lane which is dictated or governed by a speed limit, which is 60 kph down pit road. Um, but, you know, th th there are bodies there as part of your team, as part of other teams yeah. as well. And uh, caution is the main word in pit road. Or more drama from the JSP4, car 43, which is driven by Bernardo Pinheiro. So we haven't yet had the driver change there. Has the car stopped, though? Because that might be a timing issue, yes. Yeah, we have had a stop stopped. for 43. Yeah. So that should now read... Oh, he's been well into the gravel. Yeah. That's not Pinheiro, as I read it. It's uh, Jose Maria Moreros, Pinheiro's teammate. And um, both racing as silver drivers. So, again, they would have had to take a, a longer stop. But Moreros, perhaps unfamiliar with current track conditions and therefore off the road. But at least he did recover it. So we're now going to see the real world gaps and they're significant for the race leader. 21 seconds clear after that uh, pit stop. Anthony Nara crosses the line. For the five seconds back, Natan Biel under pressure from Simone Riccitelli with Rafael Narak right with him. Yeah, and going up uh, in the inside and takes that position. They were overlapping as they crossed the control line and, yeah, younger Narak gaining the spot on Simone Ricciatelli in car number three. Actually changed that to Nicola Neri. I think there's been one or two issues here with either just operator error, as in the driver ID hasn't been switched by new driver, or the information coming in is, is slightly erroneous. But Jose Maria Moreros now being displayed in the 43. And here, a couple of seconds ago, was a wide moment for Michnia Stefan battling again with George King. Almost a kind of uh, carbon copy of an instant earlier in the race, that yes. one. I had to check that wasn't a replay. But uh, on, on. So it's the Team Virage car from Pegasus Racing. That's on Biel's M Racing car. Then Rafael Narak in fourth place. Nicola Neri now, the timing corrects itself. George King. Then at Stefan. Andre Vajda down in eighth place. More squeal of tyres, and that's one of the CTF performance cars going round at turn number three. That's the trouble number 95 car. Yeah, Gilles Pouré in the 95, and that is correct because Pouré doing all of the driving today. He lost that under braking, didn't he? Yeah. And it's tricky, the run into turn three, faster than you think, actually, and then you need to be slower mid-corner. But uh, just overcooked it very slightly, and that's certainly not going to help the tyre wear in the remaining 22 minutes, plus the extra lap. The way that works is we run the clock down to zero. The first time the cars cross the line with the clock at zero, then they effectively get the last lap board. So that should eliminate... Uh, any confusion as to the race distance. Anthony Nara's having fun. I mean, the, the car was started well at Pegasus by Dimitri Enchelbert, but running in a clear second position now, well ahead of the experience within Ligiers of Nathan Biel. Biel, though, is catching, as is Rafael Narak. Both of them quicker than the second place man. Nowhere close, though, at the moment to the pace of Gillian Henrion. He's in the 145s. No one else better than the 147. At the moment, the lead is going up and up. This looks like a victory tour. Well, I do think that the events at Spa in the first race will have left a bitter taste in Gillian Henrion's mouth. You know, to have a win every single time in all 12 races would have been quite a feat, but it might be that that is just the one thing will be the blot on the copybook. This was a couple of laps ago between Stefan and King. They've been glued to one another, not quite literally, but uh, metaphorically certainly so, all through the race. And now the Romanian is back ahead of the British driver. Uh, we'll say, by the way, Hayton Carey Julie's car is still on pit lane. So whatever caused that off, I think, may have shortened their race. Yeah, that's a, a real shame, particularly for Martin Rich. There is another race later on today, though, which will hopefully see him 
with some action. He may well start the car, in fact, for race two and hand it over to Hayton at half distance. Homing in on 40 minutes gone in this race. There's a glimpse of Jose Maria Marreros turning right now through the awkward turn eight. Pretty slow corner, but it's essential to get good speed off it because it's so uphill there. And then you immediately dive back down the hill into turn number nine. 96 car there. That is our race leader, Setia Performance, along with Pigre, aboard the first of the two Setia Performance cars. Has 25 seconds on Horst Felix Felpermeyer. It's a mighty lead. So, you know, it's almost carbon copy lead, if you like, with what's going on in the JSP4 car uh, class and for the overall. Nearly 30 seconds. Going through turn six, by the way, in the last lap, uh, Gideon Onrion, as his nearest rival was going into turn one. Yeah. That's a mark of just idea. how dominant this run has been from the championship leader and indeed champion elect. But Pigue enjoying his moment in the sun, 25 seconds up the road from Horst Felix Felbermeyer. So Sadia performance ahead of RLRM Sport. And then Cool Racing, the team from Switzerland, who infiltrated all levels of ACO rules racing a few years back and now with some real success in later years. Cedric Ultramar for Cool Racing, car number four, running in third position. Right, cars four, 17 and 43 are all under investigation for not respecting minimum pit stop times. So that, if that's proven to be the case, there will be time penalties for those cars. So number four is the third place car, it's the Cool Racing car of Cedric Ultramar. Uh, number 17 is the third place car overall. The car started by Dimitri Angelbert, now in the hands of Anthony Nares. There is a podium place there in some doubts. And the 43 is the second team Virage car, now in the hands of Jose Maria Moreros. Simon Escalia there, is happy with his day. And I'm pretty sure all those numbers you just read out are either solo silvers or double silvers. And right. the time to get to in your minimum pit stop reference will be 2.05 because Julian Henrion wasn't in the list. He did a 2.06. Well, Nara did a 2.01. One. Yep. I'll say Nara, the team did a 2.01. Indeed. Uh, the sorry. other one you mentioned was the team Virage for the two Portuguese. 2.02. 2.02 for Jose Maria Moreros and Bernardo and the, and Pinheiro the, in the first the stint. Cool racing car, 2.04. So 2.05, by my reckoning, was the number to hit, and they are all under that. So the normal thing would be, it would not be to add the time, it's the time plus a, a, a run through the pits from memory. Yeah which would normally be timed at around 30 seconds. Yep, so that's if you've still got the opportunity to do so in the race, and they'll be rapidly working that through in race control right now to give teams ample chance. Uh, you have to come into the pit lane, sit there for the seconds you didn't serve, Ooh. as now very far dive back, bombs. but dive, yeah, absolutely, to the inside at turn 12, turn 11 rather, goes George King, got it stopped, and Nick Lanieri doesn't quite uh, know what happened there, that because a, all of a sudden, George King now ahead. I was about to say, George King must be quite frustrated, another lock-up before that all happened, the 44 car, by the way, going by, so this is... A recovery drive now from the number 44 that ran second, then ran off the road. But George King versus the number 44 could be quite interesting in the final 16 minutes plus that final lap, Johnny. So Nick Lanieri absolutely caught unawares that that was going to happen, and George King bags sixth place as a result. The LR Motorsport car slipping to seventh. Andre Vajda is behind, but not right behind. There's about 13 seconds, in fact, between LR and Smart driving there. And the Dussabs, uh, Louis Rossi is in ninth position. And that Louis Rossi, the ex moto it is. rider. Yes. And uh, no relation to the slightly more famous Rossi, Valentino. Marginally. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. But uh, no, Louis Rossi got exciting plans. Wants to compete in the 24 Hours of Le Mans next okay. year, wow. in fact. So, uh, well, I was thinking, well, maybe start off on the test day with Ligiers, yeah. work your way into Road to Le Mans yeah. midweek, and then you can do the big race at the weekend. That's a nice, it's a, it's a good plan for a week. Yeah. What could possibly get, go wrong? Gets you away from the family <laughs> from the summer, doesn't it? Um, so, yeah, uh, car racing, 
I'm not sure he's done much at all, but Moto125, Moto3, Moto2, FIM Endurance, motorcycling as well. Was he, was he world champion endurance? That I'd have to investigate I think further. he was, you know. He's I... also, crucially, talking about the 24 hours, from Le Mans. So, wow. you know, the, the, the guy who will have been growing up knowing all about that amazing race and wants to do it when he will be 33 years old. So, yeah, it's going to be really fun to find out whether he can get there and fulfil his dream, particularly, of course, in the centenary year as well. Absolutely right. Well, good luck to you, sir. Uh, meantime, under 15 minutes to go now. But, uh, the battle's still underway here. Pegasus Racing, what well, they deserve, but is uh, Rafael Narak finding pace in this car. Good lap times coming for the young man. And he is catching Anthony Nara, no doubt about it. And remember, that number 17 car is one of the cars that has got trouble ahead, potentially with a problem with their pit stop time. So Narak, father and son at the moment, Johnny, likely heading for a podium. It looks to me like Raphael isn't going to wait for the penalty. He's looking to go by on merit and on pace. It takes a look there. There's a bit of traffic ahead. Thinks better of it. No shortage of experience around the dinner table. You see Julian uh, Shell from Pegasus Racing in the helmet there. Pegasus Racing with history, uh, not just in the European Le Mans series, but also in the FI World Endurance Championship and at Le Mans in a variety of machinery. Remember some years ago, a one-off appearance in the rain at uh, Shanghai. Yes. And Alex Brundle coming back from illness. Has had a, about a year out, hasn't he? And uh, on the favoured Michelin wet weather rubber, went from the back of the grid to lead the race. Super in what at that stage was a Pegasus racing car, not in the first flush of youth. Trouble for the number 43 car there. Yeah, not for the first time for Jose Maria Moreros. Again, a little bit too hot into turn three. We've seen a JS2R rotate there. And then these cars much more dependent on the aerodynamic grip. When you dip beneath a certain speed, they don't have a great deal of mechanical grip because they, they weigh a, a lot less than the GT-derived cars. Here come the penalties. The first is going to go the way of the third-place car in JS2R. It's going to be the cool racing car with Cedric Ultramar. will be a one-second stop and hold. And there come the rest of them, 43. It's three seconds. That is our... That's the car we've just seen going around, isn't it? And the 17 car, car battling here with Rafael Narak, who's taken that place. It will be a four-second stop and hold penalty. That's going to be very costly indeed. So three cars, not respecting the minimum pit stop time, are going to be visiting us down pit lane once again, Johnny Palmer. Yeah, so one second for car four, three seconds for car 43, four seconds for car 17 will all top up, effectively, the pit stop time to 2.05, which is the time that should have been served, but was cut, sh cut short by those three cars. Another new fastest lap of the race for Gillian Henrion. He's now down into the mid 145s. Yep. It's a 45.4. And the track clearly in good condition because those at the sharp end of JS2 are going pretty swiftly as well. A 153.2 for Horst Felix Felbermeyer. Jose Maria Moreros did, did, just did a very good time prior to that one that uh, he made a mistake on and lost about 12 seconds to the car ahead. Yeah, so 145, 146 at the moment for the race leader. No one else better than 147. There's two or three, though, at that kind of pace. Rafael Narak. Uh, well, we need to see what his pace is like on the next lap, last lap in the 150s, but that was where he made the overtaking manoeuvre. But now in a secure third place, and the knowledge that the car has just gone by will have to pit again. Over the rise between turn four and five, steering wheel absolutely straight, but your stomach is uh, put through the mill as the car rises and falls with the circuit. And now the climb, much steadier climb, up through six and seven. And then eight and nine suddenly thrown at you very quickly indeed. Exit at turn eight, though, is so important, as mentioned, looking to try and get the slingshot out of there, up the hill, and then down the dip into nine. This is the exit at turn 11, though, for car 69 from the JS2R category, driven by Laurent Milara in the M Racing squad. And heading for a podium with the penalty for the car ahead. 
So Laura Malara at the moment, uh, 11 seconds back from Cedric Ultramar, but Ultramar, of course, is one of the drivers that must pit again. So, so Milara has had uh, podium finishes this year, but only won second place. He should inherit third now with Cedric Ultramar into pit lane to serve the extra time. Interesting battle here. This is a three-car battle for fourth. Pegasus Racing car that leads this group is one of those three cars that must stop. But behind uh, Antinara, uh, Maria Stefan and George King, both looking racy. The number 44 car taking a look up the inside. At this stage, you've got to say, sensibly, the Pegasus Racing man really should let them go. He by now should know the penalty's coming. Up the inside goes the 44. George King looks to do the same. Can't do it there. So 44 now in the hands of Maria Stefan is heading off in pursuit of Rafael Narak and a podium slot. Interesting, actually, talking about Laura Milara. He is second in the championship coming into these races on 112, but only three points back. The combination of Fabian Delaplace and Laurent Piquet, who are looking like they will win the race. So that's uh, important Ooh. points outscoring Laurent Milara. You get 25 for a win, 15 for second place. So a three-point deficit becomes a seven-point advantage going into the final race of wow. the year. Hayton Caragiuli not going to score in no, this, which uh, is exactly what happened, unfortunately, for him at Spa when he ended up in the gravel race trap. Yep. Yeah. And at Le Mans, he had a drama in the, uh, the second race there as well. So zero makes its penalty pit stop. Gianara dropping rapidly down the order as a result. Cedric Ultramar has done the same. That's dropped him, of course, out of the top three. So waiting for... It's the 43 that's not made that stop, isn't it? Still. Pit stop car 23 now under investigation. That's George King. Yes. And George uh, making that stop... Well... Did he do it in the sufficient in the, in the correct pit window? We don't have reference to that uh, post the event. He did it 2:06 though. Drive up the inside, and that's the move for third place. Yeah. So uh, Michnia Stefan on Rafael Narak, and George King is in this game as well, but with the black cloud ahead, hovering above his head. Rafael Narak struggling here. Yeah. So George King to the inside and relatively easily getting by Narak. Has he got a slow puncture perhaps up for the number 50? Le Saab car, because all of a sudden his straight line speed has disappeared and he's looked very, very strong having taken over from Dad Raymond. This is Gillian Henry on, making his way past the 22 car and Ooh. contact. Yeah, a little bit of a tap for his money there, which will have, uh, I'm sure, alarmed Gillian Henry on briefly. Seven minutes to go, further potential dramas, car 85. That is Andre Vajda. Wonder if that is uh, the team manager being called to the stewards in race control. Wonder if that was the incident in pit lane. Yeah, almost certainly. The contact between LR Motorsport and Smart Driving. So Anthony Nara rejoining the race, having uh, again served the, the extra time that was not done in the mandatory stop, rejoining in eighth position in the number 17 Pegasus racing car. So Natan Biel up to second now for M Racing and Michnia Stefan in his first Ligier European Series race on course for a podium in number 44. There's a change potentially. Yes, no, yes, no. Louis Rossi, the former motorcycle star, racing star, had a long look at the inside of Anthony Nara, not That's, quite close enough. Yes, Nara coming out after that penalty pit stop for a short mandatory pit stop. But this will give Rossi a little bit of a, an opportunity to get a bit racy. No shortage of bravery for anybody that races on two wheels. No, no, of course not. So Rossi sharing with Jacques Nicolet in the Le Dussab car. Two cars from that uh, team with strong connections with Labre Competition, of course. Raymond and Raphael Narak in the other car, the number 50. How are the sector times for Raphael this time around? Now, the middle sector was questionable again. Yeah half a second away 
from George King's pace, although George started... Oh, oh very wide. Is that George having just George mentioned King. his name? Yeah, it is. So he went blue through sector one, blue through sector two, but far too hot out of turn 15 and lose his time as a result of that. Under position. Rafael Nerac goes the rack. back yeah. through. Nerac up to fourth. Good lap around that time for Mikne Stefan as well. I, I think were we to have a chat with George King after this race, he would tell you he's not happy with something about that car. Yeah. It's not looked quite right all the way through here. Watch this is coming in too, way Ooh. too hot there. But he, he left, left the circuit it, much earlier than I would have expected yeah, a car you'd, to you'd, do. Have, you'd have thought, uh, you know, beyond the apex. Yeah. So, what was that about? I mean, he couldn't he couldn't have pitted there because he was no. way, way too wide, but would he want to pit next time around because the car's doing stuff that he didn't expect? It seems to be pointing, you know, heading for the apex perfectly naturally into turn number seven. So, I don't know, maybe you just got a bit too wide out in the dirt and then you just can't recover it from that point. Keeping an eye, by the way, on the third-place car here. He gets a, Menea gets a warning. Uh, Stefan, isn't it? Sorry. Gets a warning for track limits in the 44 car. But he is catching second place hand over fist four seconds quicker. The gap is ten seconds. We've got four minutes plus the lap left. Mm. If he can maintain that, that pace, it could be very close to second place at the end of this race. Yeah, well spotted, and Michnir Mich Stefan was very good in qualifying to bag a front row start alongside the more experienced in these cars, Gillian Henrion. Different lines being used again by George King, although tucks it neatly into the apex this time around at 15-ish. Runs a touch wider than the car ahead of him, Rafael Narak. But George King the quicker of the two here, and the rack changing his line, but cannot hold George King back. They're going to be door handle to door handle into turn number one. Oh, but George is going to lose it oh, and almost takes Rafael Narak with him as well. Again, trying to approach turn one on a tight line inside on the marbles, and that's the result. Yeah, it's been a torrid race for George King, hasn't it? It really has. Rafael Narak there, cool head from the young man there. Car 43, by the way, reported to the stewards for not respecting the stop-and-go penalty. Did not serve the penalty on the second Team Virage car. I think he's in big trouble now. Popping back into our sight, one of the TM Evolution cars. There was a brief lock-up there for Alain Grand, who took this car over in the pit stop from Simon Escalier. So, bronze-rated driver taking over from fellow Frenchman, but silver and, and uh, Grand to the outside and could see the game was up there to a certain extent, allows Cedric Ultramare through and yeah. into fourth position. Recovers one place, lost to that penalty, but he's not going to get a podium finish here. Two minutes to go and a lap. The gap up front for Gillian Henry only has 45 and a half seconds. Peerless stuff from him. Yep, north of 30 laps now for Julien Henrion, barely put a wheel wrong, having to deal with some traffic now with the JS2R, but uh, does that very professionally indeed. Well, here's the, here's the reality of this performance from Julien Henrion. You're quite right, just over 30 laps. On average, on average across the whole race, 1.5 seconds a lap faster than anybody else. Yeah, OK. That's good division in your head there, Graham. I'm <laughs> impressed with that this, this early in the morning, but... No, it, 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 it only really... gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, strike, strike while the iron's hot. Eh? Um, but yeah, I mean, that is quite a stat to be to be able to be that consistent as well. Because yeah. we, you know, we talk all the time. It's all very well being quick on one or two laps, but can you produce it over an hour, over a two-hour stint? And Gillian Henry on it, still only 19 years old, seems like he could be the real deal. Uh, I can tell you. I mean, I spotted through that race one lap and only one where Dimitri Gilbert was quicker than Gillian Henry on it, was by something like three hundredths of a second. Yeah. Here's the 95 car, so this has been the more the troubled Cetia performance duo, Gilles Pouré, working his way through the first sequence of corners. Uh, the 96 machine, much better plays for Laurent Biquet, and remember, they are battling for second in the championship with Laurent Milara and set to outscore Milara for M Racing 
by 10 points. Yep. So that will swing the pendulum very much in the favour of the CTF performance duo. I reckon it'll be a seven point leadership heading into the final race of the year. We don't have extra points for pole position or fastest lap to complicate matters. It is simply uh, race results that glean new points. 25 for a win, 18 for second, 15 for third, etc. Yeah. Clock is about to run down, and with the 16 car down at turn eight, that means the next lap will be the last lap for the overall leader, coming into a little bit of traffic as he comes round, but uh, still positions to be made up here in a lap and a bit, if you like, for the runners there. Big slide there, though, for the CTF car. And that's the 95 again, that's isn't it? Poor eight. Tucked in behind Freddie Mononto. Yeah, looked like he was going to go on to terms with him, but yeah, okay. lost that ground with a big slide at the top of the hill. The Lots thing, of rise and fall here. Do love this circuit. It's a wonderful place and uh, delighted that we can be coming back here next year with Eligiers and a longer term contract being sealed for the European Le Mans series as well was, here at Algarve International Circuit. Yeah, I was talking to one of the local uh, journalists and I was asking me why is it as uh, across the line to start the last lap now comes Gillian Henrion. Crosses the line, by the way, 48 seconds to the good. It's a drive-through penalty, by the way, for car 85 for an unsafe release. That would have been the smart driving car. Andre Vajda, uh, sixth overall. That will be, I'm sure, a time penalty now added to the end of the race. Uh, the, the question was, why are Formula One and the World Endurance Championship, and for that matter, the European Le Mans series coming here? To which the answer is, because it's awesome. <laughs> it's simple. as simple as that. Yeah. It's a fantastic place. Cut the... Uh, the people are so welcoming here. The, the climate is fantastic. It's a wonderful local area. It's a little isolated from the local towns. You need a car yes. to, uh, to get here. But um, the drivers love it. The teams love it. Facilities fantastic. And for a facility, Johnny, that in the over a decade ago, at the heart of the kind of the, 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 the big financial bust. Um, could have closed, it's quite staggering what's actually happened here. It's going to be a drive-through penalty for car 85 for an unsafe release, which is the Andre Vajda number 85 car. So that that's was the, the one that was judged to be a fault yeah, involving yeah. the LR Motorsport machine. And Natan Biel versus George King was an interesting one heading into this uh, because Biel had a 50-point advantage for second in the championship. He really only needed to finish ahead of George King and will do that. So Natan Biel should be confirmed, provisionally at least, as second in the championship. It's Louis Rossi looking for a position. I think he's going to get it because up ahead of them, off goes the JS2R. They're ahead of the race leader who is going to take the win. Louis Rossi got the place there. Yeah. So Gillian Henrion takes the win. And mighty it's... advantage above uh, the rest of them. So Julian Henrion yet to actually have the chequered flag icon next to his name on our screen. He has completed but the race. He has completed the race. The chequered flag is confirmed at the bottom. And the battle that was immediately ahead of Julian, I think, will get another lap to continue their yeah, swabbling. They will. Because Julian Henrion was right behind them. P. Great takes the win in the number 96 car for safety and performance in JS2R. Just waiting, by the way. We still don't know what the winning gap was. Yeah. Um, because of uh, the just it was, it's 50 seconds plus, I think it is. Easily. I mean, it was that. Here we go. We're now getting 48 actually because, because he lifted off with the instant in front of him. But that yeah. was a magnificent display. Uh, 17, by the way, that those positions have, uh, have changed again. Rossi this goes wide, happened. gets on the mucky stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of junk offline there, which has built up through the course of uh, a support race very early this morning, prior to the Ligiers, in fact, and now this hour-long race as well. Everybody else heading across the line, so Natan Biel finishing second. He'll get 18 points for that. George King not driving with Ronnie Valori this weekend. He was 50 points back from Biel as they squabbled for second position in the championship. So it was a very unlikely scenario that would see George King uh, bag second place on his own. And he's not quite managed it because of, a, well, a really up and down affair for George King. Fast on certain laps and then on others, unfortunately, off the road and far too often. George will be mightily frustrated with that. He finishes ahead of Nick Neri for LR Motorsport. 
support. Andre Vajda in the 85 car then next. And we're still waiting for Anthony Nara and Louis Rossi, who were right together at the start of the final racing lap. And they crossed the line with not Nara just ahead of the Frenchman. Uh, shouldn't miss, by the way, a fighting drive at the end there as Guillain Henrion comes in quite correctly to receive the plaudits of his team and the other competitors. Fighting drive right at the end that almost brought Os Felix Felbermeyer into contention for the win. Yep. Uh, quick series of laps right at the end of that race and finished the, the race just 1.6 seconds down on Laurent Piguet in the winning JS2R, the number 96 Tasty F performance car. Cracking race. Great race there from uh, Guillaume Henrion. There's lots of different ways you can approach a race when you've won the championship. He chose to do it as a victory tour, and that was spellbindingly quick, efficient, consistent, and very, very impressive. Yeah. And, well, you know, he, he's potentially advertising himself to teams that run Ligiers in the Michelin Le Mans Cup, because I don't, I'm not sure he's got a deal sorted yet for 2023, but there's 150,000 euros going his way as long as he sticks with ACO Rules Racing and, of course, the Ligier brand. This is what it means, though, to be winning in the JS2Rs, because that is Fabio Della Place, I reckon, calling Laurent Bigue home. And crucially, now they have an advantage in the championship for second place. 34 laps done. The time difference has changed again. 50.5 seconds back to Natan Biel in the 53 car, who will be sealed as second in the championship in the JSP4s. He finishes ahead on the road of Mignia Stefan and the two Naraks, Raymond and Raphael, and George King, after a uh, eventful race, finishing in fifth for Monza Garage. Setia Performance take a victory in the number 96 car, and that positions them nicely in the championship with one more race to go. Laurent Piquet and Fabian Delaplace. Horse Felix Felbermeyer circulating for a long time in third, but finishes second ahead of Laurent Milara for M Racing and Car 69. Cedric Ultramar in fourth. And sadly for Hayton Carajuli, it was effectively retirement after the car, we think, spun somewhere in the second sector. It limped back to the pit lane, but it was never to be seen again in the race. And sadly, no chance to do any driving for Martin Rich. Fabulous conditions here at the Algarve International Circuit, as now we can take a look back at an hour worth of Ligier racing. It all began then with the track very dusty offline and four, five abreast down into turn number one, but Gillian Omrion got a, a real ripper start. George King likewise, and he was briefly ahead of Dimitri Enchelbert. The two then came to blows into turn number five, and both drivers did well actually to hold on to that. This was for third position at the time, right in behind Mikneo Stefan. Then the 96 car of Fabian, Fabian Della Place started to establish itself in a good position, although at the time chasing Hayton Caragiuli. This was a spin for Michnia Stefan as he got more and more used to the JSP4. Was in second place at the time, though, and found himself in the stones at turn 12. George King, this could have been a much bigger incident than it turned out to be. Thankfully, the car did not return to the racetrack backwards, and he was able to control things. A half spin for the number 95 CTF performance car as well in the awkward turn three. That would be not the only spinner that had to, took place there. Then a dive bomb manoeuvre for George King, very late in the day on the inside of the LR Motorsport car. The 96 car working its way through, a much cleaner line there. This was an awkward moment, rather clumsy, in fact, and Andre Vajda judged to be at fault, catching the LR Motorsport car of Simone Ricciatelli as that squad did their driver change. Gillian Henrion, though, imperious out front. There have been now 11 races in the year. He has won 10 of them. How about this for a squabble into turn number one? George King on the inside, Raphael Narak on the outside. Narak did nothing wrong, really, there. Tightened the line, and George King spinning. He then ran wide, I think, on the next lap around on the exit, or rather the entry of turn 15. Slightly strange position there to leave the track. Good dicing ahead of our winner, Gillian Henrion, that Louis Rossi battle would continue around for a further lap, but Henrion and Team Virage seal another win for season 2022. And Fabian de la Place, together with Laurent Piquet, position themselves neatly in second in the championship with one more race to go. 
So there we go. If that has not whetted your appetite for further Ligier European Series racing, I don't quite know what we'll do. We will have a second race at 2.15 this afternoon. In fact, on air five minutes before that with a bit of build-up. And uh, although the main championships have been sealed, still undecided for who will finish second in JS2R. Join us for that and plenty of action, no doubt, for a further hour plus one lap race. My thanks to Graham Goodwin for the time being. And we will see you later on with the Ligia European Series here at Portimao.
le grand vainqueur. Bon, c'est la dixième fois de la saison, vous en avez l'habitude, l'équipe Team Virage qui euh, s'y habitue. Another win for the Team Virage driver number 16, Gillian Orion. Félicitations. Ah oui, dixième victoire, grosse course. Difficile de faire beaucoup de c'est ce que je disais. Et donc sur ce podium, eh bien, on va écouter l'hymne en l'honneur de l'équipe victorieuse.